Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to the DCS news for the 11th of June 2022. Um, once again, sadly, no uh, Hornet uh, tutorial video this week. I've been continuing to struggle with uh, bugs in the FA-18C. Um, last week I was trying to do a video on the Harpoon missile, uh, which is bugged when fired in the range with bearing launch mode. Uh, and uh, today I was instead going to skip forwards and then demonstrate the slam, uh, but sadly the slam is also bugged. I tried firing it in both target of opportunity and pre-planned modes, and in both modes it flew in a circle and then crashed. So uh, there's clearly something up with the, the guided missile autopilots in the FA-18 right now, uh, so you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, sadly, for me to continue the FA-18C or in a tutorial series. I'm wondering perhaps even if I should pause it for now uh, and then go back to some of the previous modules and do, do the, the kind of bonus and addendum videos that I've been intending to do. And those will be in the form of an updated air-to-air -air radar video for the F-16 because there's been a bunch of stuff added to that uh, and probably at least one or two updated videos for the GF-17 which has also seen some updates. So very interested to hear what uh, what chat has to say about that. You know, should I continue trying to do videos for the FA-18 despite these particular weapons being bugged uh, or should I skip forwards and do some of the, the bonus content that I was intending to do later? Uh, welcome to the stream, Tog. Uh, welcome to the stream, Fault Raver. Welcome, Paul. Welcome, Dave. Um, yes, oh, welcome to the stream. Yeah, indeed. Who knew the flying bug had bugs? Um, I think, actually, generally speaking, the F-18 is in a very good state um, for the most part, but it seems that I've discovered a couple of weapons, at least, which are heavily bugged. Like, for me, it, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I don't know, but you know, I've reported bugs to, to ED on their forums, and at least for me, the Harpoon and the Slam are unusable. Like, they're, they are behaving in such bizarre fashions, I can't get them to do anything correctly. So, anyway, we'll see how we get on with that in the future. So, uh, with with that dealt with, yep, sadly no tutorials, but we do have news. Um, and I believe that something was released this week? I don't know. I can't remember. Can you guys remember? Chat, can you tell me if something was released this week? Ah, well, in, in the meantime, I'll uh, I'll start talking about the, the newsletter that Eagle releases every week. Let's go and have a look at that. Maybe that will give it away. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Dear fighter pilots, partners and friends, this week we released DCS 2.7.15. Um, my my videos, like if you go to the very first one for the uh, for the Hornet, I always call out the version that I'm talking about for each of my tutorial videos because I, I like the idea that even if you view it, you know, far in the future, you at least know what version I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, we're all the way up at 2.7.15, um, which will be what I film my next version on. Um, many enhancements and fixes that can be viewed in the fuel change log. We'll take a little look at that a bit later. Most notably, we are pleased to announce that DCS South Atlantic map is now available. There you go, that's the one. I knew there was something. <laughs> Mark, new Stennis model. Yes, there's also a new Stennis model, but I was alluding to the South Atlantic map. Something about a rock in the ocean. Yes, yes. Uh, which is part of the... Um, what would you say exactly? It's part of the United Kingdom, uh, which makes some people angry uh, due to its history of belonging to various different peoples. Uh, the South Atlantic map encompasses parts of the Atlantic, Pacific and Southern Oceans, covering Southern Argentina and Chile. Uh, the map also includes a recreation of the Falkland slash Malvinas Islands, depending on which name you use, uh, watch the launch trailer. Well, I think it's at this point that we should do exactly as instructed. Let's watch the excellent launch trailer from our man, um, Skouris. Um, sadly, I cannot include the audio because it has copyrighted music and I will get copyright strucken. Uh, but uh, yes, Skouris always makes amazing videos. It's, his are some of my favorite uh, in the DCS cinematic world. And um, yeah, you see a whole bunch of really cool looking stuff. And there's at least one thing that I'm going to point out during the course of this video, so watch carefully. Of course, we get a lot of representation of the Strike Eagle, which is nice to see. Good old Harrier with a Royal Navy skin, no less, which is kind of cool. Uh, although, of course, the Royal Navy never flew this version of the Harrier. Uh, Stiggy bought the map day one and haven't played on it as none of our servers run. Uh, fair. 
I salute you, sir. Welcome to the stream. Um, yes, so of course, fair. Uh, you're, you're the man who can tell us. The representation of Argentina, how accurate is it? Does it look like home? Um, it looks pretty impressive to me. Uh, really nice cinematic, this video. I think. Very funky. Uh, yep, some airports for us to look at. Oh, of course, yeah. It, it, the, the, a bunch of interesting assets included, mostly Royal Navy stuff. Uh, quite interested to get a look at the HMS Invincible, uh, which is a ski jump carrier. Uh, it launched Harriers uh, and actually was in service right up until... Um, it was right up in the kind of early 2000s, so it was only decommissioned a couple of years before the Tarawa was decommissioned. So, uh, you know, a perfectly sensible uh, ship from which to launch Harriers, I would suggest. Uh, Mark Point, is the AV-8B close to a GR-7? Um, yes, it's fairly close to a GR-7. Um, but the Royal Navy never flew GR-7s. They only ever flew the f uh, FRS, uh, the Sea Harrier versions of the aircraft, which are based on the Harrier 1 um, fuselage. So they never flew anything like this version of the Harrier at all. So there's something interesting that you'll see in a moment. Uh, I just want to call it out because I want to know if this is something that, you know, is present in the engine now or if it's something uh, that was done just for this video. Let's uh, wait for this to come up. Oh, a bit more of the F-15. The Mosquitoes. Yeah. Lots of footage of the F-15, of course. Did I miss it? Where's the thing I'm looking for here? I'll, uh, I'll maybe even pause it so that you can... There we go. Okay, so here. That's uh, what looks like a killer whale. Um... I didn't think there were any marine life in DCS, but here we are. It's represented here. Uh, I don't know if our man Skuras has used a mod uh, to get that in the game, or if marine life is something that's present in this map, or is going to be added to the core DCS simulation. So that's an interesting one. Uh, 33YMG, did they say anything? Uh, did, did they say anything? Any performance? Optimization for VR. I'm struggling to get a decent experience. Uh, well, this is the very first release of the map, um, and we've seen before that um, kind of first releases of these maps tend to have performance problems. Like Syria uh, being a good example. Like I remember early on, the performance in Syria was very bad, uh, and as time went on, they optimized it and optimized it, and now uh, I think it runs really, really well. So um, I would suggest give it time. This is their very first release of this map. Uh, Fair FM. Well, uh, I've been only once in Ushuaia. Uh, landed in the cockpit of a 737, and it seems pretty well, must say. Uh, there are some airports missing in the north. Uh, San Julian. Um, okay, I I'm not, I'm not going to insult you all by trying to pronounce place names. Um, and one in Chile. Uh, Tog, they added killer whales to that map, from what I understand. So this is a map-specific thing. That's bloody cool. Of course, in the Persian Gulf, we had the tankers. Uh, so now in, in uh, this map, we have whales. That's really cool. Uh, Mark, yes, they are. I've seen them on the map. I think it's linked to civilian traffic, as I have it on high. Uh, fair. If they add that, it will give more life to the map, which is good. Um, yeah. That's really cool to know. So this is actually specific to the South Atlantic map. Uh, I wonder if they're going to look to add wildlife to other maps. Something I would like to see, um, and maybe this has no place in a military simulator, but I would love to see birds, uh, because birds are a constant presence when you're flying. When I fly IRL, now, albeit I'm flying in light aircraft, you know, only a few thousand feet above the ground, um, birds are a constant presence, and there's something you have to, you know, look for, watch out for, and so on. So, I'd love to see some birds in DCS. And of course, we have the bird strike simulation built into the game, but it's really just a random number generator that sometimes makes one of your engines fail. So, um, you know, there's no visualization associated with that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, DCS South Atlantic available now in open beta. The RASBAM terrain development team is proud to present the South Atlantic map that is a beautifully and majestic, beautiful, sorry, and majestic combination of Argentina, Chile, and the Falkland slash Malvinas Islands. The topography of the region includes the beautifully rugged mountains of Chile, the vast and colourful Patagonian plains of Argentina, and the windswept islands of the west and east Falkland Malvinas. 
covering an area of 3.1 million square kilometers. The team's goal has been to give them uh, give the DCS community the opportunity to develop missions that reflect the scale and complexity of modern day operations in this scenic region. Now, this this is something that I'm um, not really clear on the 3.1 million square kilometers. People have been talking about uh, whether or not this is the land mass or the total map area, um, because a few people looked at the F10 map and said that it looks like a lot more than 3.1 million. Um, kilometers but um i don't know like i you know, to be totally upfront i've not bought this map yet although i probably will fairly shortly it's currently available for a limited time at only 55.99 us dollars um uh, norman bird strikes yes tog watch it for flying twitters uh Aronov, uh, we have birds in world war ii maps gulls on the coasts of normandy and england non-collidable though that's really good to know. Um, I don't have any of the World War II assets, not the maps uh, or, or the bits and bobs, so I didn't know that. Talk, falcons and eagles aren't enough, I guess. <laughs> Very good. Um, so yes, looking really stunning in these pictures. Uh, when developing this map, the team was proactive in listening to the DCS community regarding both scale and requirements of modern day military operations. This provides the best possible experience and leverages land class textures drawn from aerial and satellite photography. Uh, development of the South Atlantic map will continue and the team is now moving their focus from the Falkland Malvinas Islands to mainland Argentina and Chile. They will flesh out the rural areas of the map to provide a more authentic and lived in look. This will include adding additional buildings, infrastructure and tidying up vector data like mountains. Yeah, I heard that there are a couple of hills that have weird angles on them just now, but they're working on that. Yeah, our community's input pushed for the inclusion of mainland uh, and the team dedicated to make it even better. Uh, moving forward, additional airfields will be added throughout the map to provide a diversified area of naval and fighter operations. The goal is to include all airfields at a high quality level. More villages, settlements and road infrastructure improvements will be added across the various regions. The following items will also be further improved during the early access period. Uh, visible uh, tiling around some airfields and at certain view angles, some angular sea cliffs, uh, forest tiling from some view angles. Uh, the DCS South Atlantic map has undertaken a new strategy for generating terrain, whereas all other DCS maps rely heavily on art-created ground textures combined with satellite textures, the South Atlantic map relies mostly on satellite textures. While this results in a more realistic looking map at medium to high altitudes, ground textures may appear less defined at low altitude. Uh, the team is committed to further improving the low altitude terrain textures. So there you go. Uh, fair, Argentina in total is 2.8 million square kilometers, so there's something wrong in that number. Well, you know, you're you're a guy who knows, so I'm going to I'm going to believe you on that one. Um so yes, I would wonder if hmm, yeah, so I was suggesting maybe it's just the land mass, but what you're suggesting is that even just the land mass is more than what they're suggesting here. So, uh yeah, there's something funny going on there. Um hmm, interesting. Interesting. And then we've got the Stennis. We've got a free update to the Stennis. Uh, so we've updated the 3D exterior model of the CVN-74 John C. Stennis aircraft carrier and are pleased to announce that this update is completely free to all of you. We eagerly await your feedback. So this is an interesting one. Um, there's actually an article on Stormbirds, which we'll get to a little bit later, where they're suggesting that what this actually is, is it's the external model from the supercarrier. Um, so th th this would bring the free carrier up to a very, very high standard. Although, of course, it's without uh, the advanced ATC, it's without the, the deck crew and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Fair. It takes seven hours flight from north to south. <laughs> and Tog was suggesting that I do that as a live stream in the Harrier. I think in the Harrier it's going to take even longer than that. <laughs> Although the Harrier can carry four fuel bags, so you know, I guess it's viable. Um, yeah, that would be crazy to do that. I think that would be very, very difficult uh, to stay awake and, uh, and yeah, to actually achieve that. In any case, uh, something else that happened this week was that we got an update to the open beta. Let's jump into the change notes here. Uh, the main thing, of course, was the inclusion of the DCS South Atlantic map by Razbam, uh, but then the core simulation had a bunch of stuff happening as well. Uh, we've added the Type 59 medium tank, uh, the radar... Uh, 
model for the GF17, the AI GF17 has been tuned, uh, some fixes to voice chat, we've got the new version of the Stennis, and then there's a whole bunch of fixes uh, to all manner of stuff. I'm not going to read out all of these individually. Uh, but uh, yeah, a whole, whole bunch of bug fixes. This looks a, like a, a nice beefy DCS world update. Uh, F18 Hornet, we've got the new Flare implementation. We saw pictures of that before, which looked really rather good. I wonder actually, do, do they include that in the screenshots? Because uh, there were some good screenshots before for this. All of them to the... Yeah, they all just link to the sale page here. Um, yeah, that's an F16. Uh, and that's the A10. Yeah, especially in the A10, you can see just the, the increase in detail in this FLIR image. And I believe they haven't, well, I don't know, but I don't think they've actually changed the FLIR model particularly. This is mostly just tweaking of the gains and contrast settings. So uh, it's impressive the, the, the improvement they've managed to, to produce here. This is now present in the FA18C as per this update. They've also added the AIM-7P Sparrow, which they announced in the previous week's newsletter. That's in-game now. And then there's a bunch of fixies. Um, they haven't included the Tald, which they were talking about last week. Uh, requires further testing and is planned to be available in the next update. Uh, work is also proceeding on the UFC BU page, updating the flight model and flight control system, IAM loft queues, and finalizing the INS GPS alignment system. We're focused on completing the Hornet roadmap. Uh, I'm not familiar with this. What is the UFC BU page chat? Does anyone know? I've never heard of this. Um, <laughs> talk, better load up on coffee. Some South American blend me. Mmm, mm, that sounds good. I like that. Uh, Fault River. So I quickly calculated this with the in-game measurements. South Atlantic is that number of square kilometers or 921.600 square sea miles. Okay. Okay, so so their their measurement is correct. That suggests to me that they don't actually include all of Argentina uh, in the map, which would make sense. Uh, it would be a, a lot of work for them to do that. Uh, Desold, wrong. Flare wasn't implemented until very recently. Uh, I think you're wrong. <laughs> the the, the Flare was implemented a couple of months back. Uh, we got the, the brand new Flare uh, model with the new Apache. Um, so whenever the Apache was released, that must have been three months ago now. Um, so yes, yes, the, the new Fleur was implemented, very much was. Uh, there was a bit of a delay in it being properly implemented in the Harrier. Uh, initially the Harrier had the new model, but it was very bugged. Uh, and then over the next couple of patches, they improved it. But the FA-18C had the new Fleur model from the start. Um, it had it from the, yeah, from the release of the Apache. F-16C Viper. Also, the new, new FLIR implementation fixes and adjustments. See, they specifically call out the fixes and adjustments to the new FLIR implementation. Um, added Cruise DD page. Can I get a hallelujah? Um, it's, it's just the only thing I've been asking for from the very first day that the F-16 came out, and I'm very, very exciting. Uh, very, very excited. Sorry, very excited indeed. Um... And the GBU24 Paveway 3 LGB is added. And note, we're investigating the addition of all the possible delivery modes for a later update. In the meantime, the GBU24 provides greater range and better hard target capability than GBU10. So it's it's operating in its most basic mode just now. Uh, there are, uh, I think, a bunch of kind of terminal uh, capabilities that it has, which are not modeled as yet. Uh, Desold, uh, I'm talking about the F-16, F-18, and A-10C2. Um, yes, uh, the, all of those had the new FLIR model at the release of the, the Apache. Uh, it's just that they're, they're now tweaking it because they weren't happy with the way it was looking. Uh, the Apache was the test bed for the new FLIR, if I remember correctly. Um, not exactly. Uh, the new FLIR was created for the Apache, but it was made available with most of the modules all at the same time. And now even the third-party modules in the form of the Harrier and the GF-17 have it as well. Um, so yeah, added a bunch of stuff. We've got the HAD uh, expanded function. We've got the HSD expand and zoom functions. We've got the updates to the digital Flickus, which is a work in progress. There'll be more coming to that soon. Uh, we've added the VIPs, the VRPs, the OA1, OA2 points, pull-up points, HMD symbology. Lots and lots of good stuff coming into the F-16 with this particular patch, so really nice to see this one. Uh, and we've got a bunch of new preset loadouts. 
Uh, corrected FCR and HSD symbols. Uh, radar tracks color error in off state and ambiguous states error. So a bunch of uh, really cool stuff coming to this. Uh, note, we have read all concerns regarding radar performance and we are preparing a white paper that reviews and explains performance. For the following update, we hope to add the new feature of manual bombing mode uh, ACAL fixed DED pages. In parallel, other new items are in development, like setting up the IDM L16 networks, uh, flight air to air target assignments. Ooh, that's a cool one. Uh, ALE 50 towed decoy, the Mark 84 air, smoke pods, and more. Very exciting. Uh, updates to the Apache. We've got the Hellfire Ripple modes now, which were demonstrated in a video, which I, I showed a little, little while back. Um, <laughs> added the key in the battery switch, important details. Uh, VKB input for pilot and operator, I don't know what that means. Uh, added two separate missions, uh, added B to the controls for parking brake, improved threat updates on the ASC and TSD pages, and then a bunch of fixes. Uh, note, items in development that we hope to release for the next update include the altitude hold mode, target state estimator, I'm not really familiar with this, uh, updated performance page, and George as pilot improvements for setting with power conditions. Settling, sorry, settling with power. And then MI-24P Hind by Eagle Dynamics, they've added the R-60M missile. And actually one of the next things I'm gonna show you is the video uh, where that's demonstrated. Uh, to be able to use the missile, you need to check the R-60 equipment box for the MI-24P aircraft. Slot uh, additional properties in the mission editor. It's checked by default. Uh, and launchers can be mounted only on racks one and four. Um, there's a bunch of notes there. They've also added VKB input preset. Oh, okay, right. So this is like control uh, preset for pilot. That's kind of cool. Uh, added new liveries, improved a bunch of stuff, and there are fixies. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then, yep, updates to the, the supercarrier module, mostly in the form of uh, an update to the free Stennis model. Um, got the new FLIR implementation for the A10C. And anything else to call out? Um, GF-17 added the probability of detection for air-to-air -air radar. So they basically changed the way uh, the, the, the air-to-air -air radar is implemented slightly. Unstable track is now possible as well. Um, if no, HPT, SPT, AA radar shows bearing range for TDC to current waypoint. Um, right, so I, I guess that means if you don't have a current steer point selected, then it's going to be... It, it's going to be just... Uh, bearing range from yourself, basically. A clickable eject handle. <laughs> All the good stuff. Uh, F-14, they've uh, reduced the AM-54 induced drag. Uh, they've returned to original guidance parameters, um, thanks to the guidance fixed by ED. Uh, and ED have done some updates to the missiles as well. Uh, fixed a low fuel initialization. Fuel now drains from the correct tanks again. Uh, and removed the new unrealistic maneuver flap axis. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So yeah, and then a bunch of other fixies. So a whole load of really cool stuff coming here, and some fixies to campaigns, as always. Um, Ernov, will we be able to whack people with our toad decoy, though? This is interesting, because at one stage, Eagle was talking about updating the kind of hose dynamics for the, the refueling aircraft, and there was going to be, like, uh, collisions and contacts with that. Uh, and that's not been released as yet. It's something they were playing around with. It'd be really cool to see that. And of course, if you had that, then you know why would your toad decoy not have physics? Uh, you could have some kind of US versus China style situations where they intercept each other and then dump chaff into each other's engines or try and smack each other with toad decoys. Um, it sounds like the kind of things that would happen IRL to me. But that'd be really cool to see. I'm, I'm quite hopeful that we'll see those kinds of uh, new physics based stuff uh, in the game at some point, because of course we had the updated physics for the, the tow hook, which was really nice to see. Um, low altitude passes will be fun then. Yogi, good evening, welcome to the stream, sir. Uh, South Atlantic map is awesome. Yes, it looks really, really good. Um, to, to carry on with some videos, let's review the video posted by Wolfpack345 this week, all about the R60M, which has now been added to the hind. Uh, he demonstrates firing this, blowing up some poor little Hueys, and uh, you know also demonstrates the the new additional control panel that you get inside the cockpit in order to interact with this. Um, did they mention was that the last patch actually when they added the the machine gun to the the crew cabin? 
Um, I guess that that's already in the game as of just now. I don't know. They were certainly working on that. Maybe it's not in yet. Uh, I'm sure chats can uh, update me on that. So yeah, you have the ability to carry four R60Ms in total. Either well, you can either have them like a kind of a single configuration or a double configuration on those pylons, uh, one and four. Uh, Aronov, ooh, new kinds of pain from air to air refueling. Yeah, that would be really cool. Like <laughs> smashing your canopy with the with the drogue would be funny. Um, Yogi, make sure you give the channel a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Yes, please. So, um, Wolfpack does a bunch of talking here. Let's uh, jump forwards to where he actually demonstrates powering these bad boys up. Um, so yeah, you've got you've got basically this air-to-air -air missile panel uh, in the cockpit, in in good kind of Soviet um, uh, tradition. It's just a bolted-on thing. And with this, of course, you can power them up. They take a set period to become ready, uh, and then you can also select which missile to power. And yeah, they've got air and ground modes. As I understand it just now, the uh, anti-ground unit capability is not simulated, although it will be coming in the future. So yeah, it's uh, it's all pretty much straightforward. Yeah, and you're going to make sure that your weapon selector is in the off missile position. Uh, and you're supposed to get a tone, it's quite a different tone from what you get from a Sidewinder, uh, but you're supposed to get a tone when you put your target in the inner circle on your gun sight. Uh, and then you can just fire, basically. And it's not like the, the MiG-21 missile selector where it's kind of mechanical and it flips to the next missile. I know that's not simulated in DCS, but in the real MiG-21 the selector actually shifted to the next missile. With this you have to manually flip it to the next one. Uh, Yogi, are you going to do a tutorial on the new F-18C decoy? Um, oh, the Tald. Well, the, the Tald is not in-game yet, um, so I won't be able to do a tutorial on it yet. It was supposed to, well, it was originally planned to be included in this update, but sadly it didn't make the cut, so it's going to be coming in the next update. There we go, there's a poor little Huey being destroyed despite it dumping a bunch of flares and trying to defend itself. And yeah, he's leaving it in position one because there's a, a second missile on that pylon as well. R60s against ground units. Yes, it is possible to fire R60s against hot ground targets. It's actually possible to use some versions of the Sidewinder in the same role. Um, you know, there have been cases in the past, like I, I know that Harriers in the past have employed Sidewinder missiles in an air to ground capability. You do need a nice hot target for that. So, you know, something like the engine deck of a tank is probably just fine. Uh, I'd imagine things like transport trucks and things like that are not going to give you a sufficient heat signature. Yeah, not reliable. Exactly as Tog says. Yeah, you could do it, but it wasn't its intended purpose. Uh, but yeah, in the real world, you, you can sometimes use heat seekers against ground targets. Uh, Yogi, have you seen the new MB339 startup tutorial? I have not. Um, I, I showed the, the trailer for the MB339 last week, and I didn't know there'd been further uh, tutorials for that one as yet. So uh, that's something I'll need to review. That sounds like a cool thing to watch. I'm quite interested in that aircraft. Uh, I think that I will probably buy the MB339. So anyway, that's the, the video from uh, Wolfpack, Wolfpack 345 uh, on the new R60s coming to the MI24. Uh, we also got a video from our man, Matt Wagner, uh, I'm, and no, I'm not going to do the sound, uh, where he demonstrates the AI JTAC in the Apache. Now, I'm not clear on whether or not any of this is new functionality. I suspect this is the exact JTAC that we've had forever, uh, but perhaps there's not been that much content out uh, about its use in the Apache. Uh, and one of the cool things he demonstrates, which I'm pretty sure was always there, uh, was the ability to get your JTAC to snake the the infrared uh, pointer. So yeah, he calls he calls for Sparkle and the the AI JTAC complies. Let's give him a moment to, to do that. Sparkle. There you go, there's your Sparkle. Uh, and then he further demonstrates the fact that you can get the guy to do something called snake, and that's where he draws a figure of eight in the area of the target. And this is used in the event that you're having a hard time spotting the infrared laser. There you go, that's him doing it now. So he's doing a little, little figure of eight snake there. 
uh, and you can get him, you can make a steady call to make him stop doing that. Um, so yeah, really cool video, really nice to see the, the AI JTAC. Uh, it's something that I would love to see expanded actually, because the, the, the JTAC works fine in single player, but it can struggle quite a bit in multiplayer, especially if you have multiple people trying to check in with it and use it. Um, so it would be nice to see the AI JTAC expanded at some point and made a bit more reliable. But anyway, in the meantime, here he goes. He demonstrates uh, destroying an enemy vehicle here uh, using a Hellfire under the direction of the AI JTAC, which is nice to see. Yogi, I understand ED has revamped the FLIR across all the modules. Have you had a chance to test it? I have not as yet, no. Uh, this update was on, what was it? Was it Wednesday this came out? Uh, and I've actually not, uh, not actually tried the FLIR since then. Um, but um, based on the images that they've shared, it looks like it is vastly improved. So that's really good to see. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, Fair, as far as I know, Apache hasn't, hasn't a laser finder yet. Uh, yeah, that's going to be cool. Uh, yeah, that, that's correct. Um, you, you don't have... A... Actually, wait, let me think. Does the Apache have laser spot search? You might be right. Uh, you might be right. It perhaps doesn't at the current time. I, I would assume the real aircraft does. Uh, but I, I haven't flown the Apache that much. I've only done like three or four sessions with Dot Chuckles, uh, and in all of them I was the co-pilot gunner, um, sitting there with an Xbox controller doing my thing. So I've not had that much time in it. Still spend almost all my time in the Harrier. Um, anyway, and last thing for this week, uh, I've got this article here from Stormbirds, always an excellent source of DCS World News, uh, where they're going into more detail about the new Stennis carrier. Um, so there are two John C. Stennis models in DCS World right now, but it looks like Eagle Dynamics is merging these supercarriers together with DCS supercarrier owners getting some added features. Um, so, so yeah, they're basically saying that this will become a single model, which seems quite sensible. Uh, the default DCS World USS John C. Stennis carrier has been around since DCS World 2.5, released back in 2018. It was an adequate carrier experience that lasted us until 2020, when DCS Supercarrier released and set a new bar for DCS World Carrier operations. Uh, multiplayer since then has often had servers offering both a Supercarrier, uh, one of the five represented, and the original default Stennis as well. This was fine, however there are some problems with the older model. In addition to being less detailed and not having any of the Supercarrier features, it also has some problems that include the FLOLS not being accurately aligned and the size of the carrier itself being off. I'd heard this a few times actually, that the free one for some reason the deck was smaller, and I don't know. Enough to be noticeable and potentially problematic when the deck is full of jets. Uh, Eagle Dynamics looks to be solving some problems here by merging these models. Now this, you know, to be clear, this has happened now. Uh, as of that update. Uh, Frantic Stone, when does the American Tornado get released? Uh, well, they, 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 he's referring to the F-18E Strike Eagle, everyone, and uh, that's supposed to hit early access by the end of this year. Um, Aronov, I thought it had LSS in DCS already, uh, and Ferris says, no, not implemented yet. Um, Tog, when you release it, Frantic... It should be soon. No, it's not soon. It's it's likely going to be near the end of the year, uh, is my understanding. So might be looking at like December or something like that. But uh, I don't think we've had like a firm uh, release date. But you know they have talked about it being this year for certain into early access. Um, yeah. So what's going on here? Uh, da -da 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 -da. The new Stennis is up to the supercarrier standard now regarding the model, and those who own the supercarrier will see more features added to the Stennis in the future. Uh, another comment asked, commenter asked if uh, we'd see the deck crew appear on the carrier. Uh, in the future, you will if you own supercarrier, says Big Nui. So this actually could be quite good. This, this could mean that in the future, you can place one carrier and people who do or don't own the supercarrier can all fly onto and off of it. And all that will happen is people who don't own the supercarrier won't see the deck crew and won't get the advanced functionalities. So this is this is a really, really cool thing. Because then, then the, the USS John C. Stennis can become your default standard carrier for all your multiplayer missions, and it just doesn't matter. So I think this is a step in the right direction. Now, of course, um, we have... A, a small controversy here with the release of the, the North Atlantic uh, in the fact that it comes 
basically with an asset pack because it's got a bunch of Royal Navy ships. Now, I don't know for certain, but I would assume that only people who buy the South Atlantic map are going to get those units. And this is going to create two groups of people in the DCS world world. They're going to be people who have those units and can fly in missions that include, for example, HMS Invincible, and they're going to be people who don't win the map and can't join missions that include that ship, even if those missions are not on the South Atlantic map. So, um, you know, chat, tell me, what do you think about this? I think this is a bad move, personally. Uh, you know, this this thing they're doing here with the Stennis, this is a really good move, and this brings the community together and allows them all to play together on the same servers. Uh, whereas the South Atlantic map's asset pack, unless I'm misunderstanding, could create a division and is not ideal, in my opinion. Uh, Yogi, what's your bet on when the Typhoon will be launched? Um, I think, you know, early access, we're, we're probably at the absolute earliest. We're probably looking at 2023, 2024, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I, I don't see that being anywhere near release. The only things we've seen of it so far have been pre-rendered stuff, and cutscenes, trailers. Um, so I would be very surprised if it's anywhere near a releasable state. Uh, so yeah, might be a little while yet. Ernov, as far as I know, Razbam said the assets will be available to all for free, like their KC-130. Okay, well in that case I stand corrected, and if that's the case, that's exceptionally good news. Because yeah, I would hate to see uh, a, a division of the community, and it just is bad for everybody, basically. Talk reminds me of the issue they had during the Arma days with some owning DLC and others opting out. Yeah, yeah I remember this being a thing back in Arma 2 days. I know that they... Uh, resolved that by the time of Arma 3 with in-game purchases and little pop-ups and things like that. But um, but yeah, in, in the Arma 2 days, this was problematic. I, I do remember that. So, that, uh, that brings us to the end of the DCS news for this week. Uh, and so, as always, I will give a little shout-out to the VAF, as I always do. Um, so yeah, the VAF, it's a, a virtual squadron started by myself and Dot Chuckles, who is normally on the channel with me and um, it's uh, an opt-in milsim style virtual squadron flying a variety of different airframes um, you have the option of just joining the squadron flying whatever you like uh, without any mandatory training or if you'd like a slightly more milsim experience you can join one of our numbered squadrons we have them for the harrier uh, the f-14 the f-16 the f-18 the a-10 and the apache at present uh, and then you have mandatory training uh, with uh, with skilled instructors, people such as Fair, in fact, who is the squadron leader for the F-18 squadron. And uh, you can get your rating in that aircraft and you can join us in our training and mission sessions. We do a training session every Tuesday at 8 p.m. UK time, and we do a mission every Thursday at 8 p.m. UK time. And then throughout the week, there are people doing ad hoc bits, ad hoc bits of flying uh, and joining other people's servers and things like that. So there's always stuff going on. Uh, please, if if you would like to, check the show notes below for the link to our Discord. Everybody is welcome, whether you intend to fly with us or not. Very welcome to join our Discord, have a look around, chat with us. Uh, and if you do want to fly with us, then just uh, shout out in general chat and let us know what kind of aircraft you enjoy flying. Uh, Yogi, my view is buy the South Atlantic map and get everything. <laughs> yes. Ernov, correction, only part of the assets will be free for, for all. Uh, Yogi, when will Dot Chuckles be returning to the channel? Don't know yet. I spoke to him today. And uh, so, you know, he's uh, in good spirits, but he's still on the, on the mend. He's still on the road to recovery and not ready for the stream yet. So uh, hopefully... He's feeling well enough soon that he can come and join us again. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm sure all of you are too. So with all that, I've been Deepak. Normally, every week I would release a tutorial video with the current series being on the FA-18C. As I said uh, a little bit at the beginning of the stream, I've had terrible trouble trying to do my next video because I first tried to do a video on the Harpoon, found it to be bugged. This week, I've tried to do a video on the Slam, found it to be even more bugged, uh, and so now I'm considering pausing the F-18 tutorial series until those weapons are fixed and working normally, uh, and in the meantime what I will probably do for next week, I'll probably go back and do an updated video, like uh, one of my addendum or bonus videos for one of the previous airframes that I've done. Uh, I have been intending to do an updated radar video for the F-16, because it has a whole bunch of additional symbology 
uh, and features since the, I did the original video. Uh, I also have bonus videos that I want to do for the GF-17 and for the Harrier. So I will probably jump on and do some of that rather than continuing with the Hornet just now because it seems that each each new weapon that I'm picking up now has more and more bugs and I think that, you know, I think the F-18 needs a little bit of time for bug fixing. Uh, I should go back over actually the uh, the change log for the most recent update and see does it actually fix any of the things that I've been struggling with. Um, no, no, it, they don't. They don't mention it in the change log. In fact, so yeah, hopefully that's going to get fixed at some point soon, and I will then return to the F-18. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, like I said, normally every Saturday at 7.30 there'd be a premiere for a tutorial video. I'm very hopeful that I'll get you all one next week. Uh, and that's always followed by the DCS news, which just happens to be this thing, what you're watching right now. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. And until next time, fly safe.